Hi everybody, it's Christina from Pretty Distressed. Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I am going to be doing a trash to treasure makeover. I'm embarrassed to tell you that I paid money for this piece on Facebook Marketplace, but it turned out really cute. And I'm also going to be introducing you to my friend Corey at Desert DIY. So if you wanna see this trash to treasure makeover, just keep watching. Today's video is sponsored by Skillshare. You guys know I'm a huge fan of Skillshare. It is a online community for curious and creative people and they have classes on anything that you wanna take from marketing to art, video, photography. I have learned so much already. A class I've recently been taking is the Creative Toolkit, Six Techniques to Spark Original Ideas by Esteban Gast. It's been really helping me get through my burnout and spark my creativity. Skillshare is offering you an amazing deal today just for watching this video. The first 1,000 people that click on my link in the description box are gonna get a free trial to a Skillshare premium membership so you can start checking out all the amazing classes they have. So as I said in the intro, I got this off of Facebook Marketplace for 60 bucks. When we picked it up, it was a porch pickup and the bottom was falling out and the back was not doing this thing any good. So we moved the back and actually instead of putting the bottom back on, we just used a sturdy piece of plywood that we had on hand to reinforce the back and it really reinforced the structure so we didn't have to put anything back on the bottom. So I probably did overpay for this piece, but I've always wanted to make over an empire dresser. And this is a really old piece and super cute. Just, it was not in the best shape. And if I would have saw it before I paid for it, probably wouldn't have bought it. But anyways, here we are with it. it this thing has been hanging out in my garage all summer long. You guys have seen me do projects on top of it. I've been storing products on top of it. And I finally pulled it out and decided to tackle it. I've been ignoring it because it has two layers of paint and lots of veneer damage. And this is not something I can just paint over because it does have a layer of latex on it. And latex is horrible on furniture, you guys. It's just peeling. It's even worse because I think this was put on top of a chalk paint with a wax. So latex paint is definitely not gonna stick to that. So my idea was that I needed to strip all this paint off and then kind of assess the situation and see what I wanted to do with it. I originally started sanding it trying to scrape this paint off, but it just kept gunking up my sandpaper. So I grabbed this Wagner heat gun. I bought this at Lowe's when I was doing my Minwax project. So I decided to bust this out and try to remove the paint with this. And it was actually a really easy process and I like it a lot better than using a chemical stripper. I'm actually gonna do a bonus video for you guys on stripping paint off with this heat gun. So be on the lookout for that, that will be coming soon. So I'm gonna take a break from my project to introduce you to my friend Corey from Desert DIY. She is a furniture flipper and DIYer as well on YouTube. Corey is a whiz with a paint sprayer. She grew up painting cars and she is a mother of a one-year-old. So she has to get projects done fast. She is gonna be making over a bench over on her channel today and I've seen it, it's super cute. So make sure you hop over there and watch it when you're done here. Okay, back to my project. I am just cleaning up all my paint, which is a lot easier to clean up than when you're using a chemical stripper. And I'm just grabbing my sander back out and then getting the varnish off of here. You could also use like an afterwash or a mineral spirits to get some more of that paint off, but then you have to wait for it to dry and I don't like the odor and stuff. So I just went straight in with my sander. I'm just using a medium grit sandpaper here. I'm using my surf prep sander, which is great for rounded edges like this, with their foam abrasives.
once I got everything sanded down, I loved the color that I had that the previous stain kind of left behind. I didn't want to do anything to this. I loved the raw look. I loved the kind of rustic finish and the uneven finish that it was giving. So I thought this was beautiful. Um, the problem is still the drawers are in rough shape and I didn't want to lose the beauty of that wood and I had no way of repairing this. So I kind of wanted to cover up the imperfections of the drawers without having to take all that veneer off and painting them. So I decided to grab a transfer. I had this Prima transfer, the Folk number no. two, and it almost looks like a stencil, but it's going to be an easier way to do a stencil and less time consuming. And transfers are really easy to work with. Um, you just need to make sure that you have a clean surface. You can go over painted wood or raw wood like this. My wood was really rough and coarse and I had a little bit of trouble getting this to stick. I think if I would have top coated it first and then put the transfer on, I would have had an easier time just because of how rough my surface was. If you're having a smooth surface, I don't think you would have that issue. Um, so it was sticking a little bit more to my transfer paper than I would have liked but I actually liked that it was distressing it even further than what the actual print was the print is a little bit distressed anyways but it was getting more distressed by some of the pieces sticking and not sticking and because this piece is so rustic I was actually loving the way that was looking It is a really good idea to plan ahead and measure your piece and measure your transfer to make sure you have enough material. I did not do that. So my original idea was to use this transfer all over the drawers, but unfortunately, I ran out of transfer. There was not enough transfer to complete all the drawers. So I got the idea of just using it on the top half of the bottom drawers. So I had to go back in and use a sander to get the bottom design off. I was actually texting back and forth with Corey during this whole debacle and she was a great encouragement to me. So I'm glad I got it figured out. Right now I'm just prepping the piece to seal it with a top coat. So I am just wiping back any dust or debris before I start sealing that. And it will be no surprise to you that I selected to seal this with Dixie Belle clear coat in flat. I love the flat look that this gives. It doesn't add any color to my piece and I'm going to be applying it with the zebra fan brush. This is my second time using this brush with this top coat and I really love the way it applies, especially on raw wood. It really helps smooth out those lap lines in between because of the way the brush fans and it just spreads the top coat out evenly and you don't have any brush strokes and it goes really fast with this brush. So this is becoming one of my favorite top coat brushes and you guys know I love this top coat. I use it all the time. It adds no yellow at all to my wood, which I love because I wanted to preserve this color as much as I could. It will go on dark like this when your piece is wet. It will look like a different color, but as it dries down, it goes back just to that original color that I had before.
this is also a perfect sealer for these transfers because you want to put a water-based top coat over these to protect them. This top coat is fast drying, so it's dry in about two hours and I came back in and did a second coat over the whole piece. Once it was dry, I brought it inside and Murphy was really interested in it. So I'm going to put it back together and add my new hardware. I picked out my hardware from Lowe's and it was a super affordable price of $2.18 a knob. What a steal. They are a white ceramic with a gold accent and they just fit perfectly with this rustic piece. So just to remind you, here is what I started off with. This poor little dresser covered in lots of paint and here she is now. I love this rustic finish and I think this is a true trash to treasure story. I'm glad I didn't give up on her. for joining me for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to go check out Corey at Desert DIY and her project that she's making over this week. I will be back next week with another project. Thanks for being here, you guys, and I will see you next time. Watching. I say actually all the time. I'll try again. I'm embarrassed to tell you I actually, I actually, I actually paid for this piece, babe. Actually.